I woke up in the morning, had a cup of milk, and read the papers. Police initiate a thorough investigation of the Jiuga Saki School. What? That's my school. I understood the moment I saw the headlines. Someone was suspected of accepting bribes. Apparently there were some under the table deals between the school's director and the contractors working on the school's expansion project. So that's why the stock's going to plummet. Sure, Tori. That girl's family may be facing a crisis. Ah, oh, well, it has nothing to do with me. Ah, yes. Pretty, pretty, pretty big news, eh? Huh? Oh, is that what you were talking about? In retrospect, Aichi would never bother to read an article about Shiratori construction. Regardless of the school's financial situation, our daily lives will go on unaffected. Hello. Subaki! A girl! Subaki didn't look very well as she greeted me. Oh no. She obviously hiding something. You don't have to force yourself to come to school. You really are strong, Subaki. Subaki shook her head. Jesus. Don't say that when you know jack shit about what she feels. Ah, it's dumbass. Baka. Kali returned to Subaki's face as we continue our banter. On our way back to the classroom, Subaki and I ran into a Shiratori. Hey! What up, girl? Shiratori didn't even look at me. There seems to be quite a fiasco. Duh. I read the news. Shiratori crossed her arms when I brought up the subject. Looks like Tsubaki doesn't know anything about this. Damn, she just said that out casually. She spoke as if it didn't concern her. Huh? Jane. Mizuna Mizuha walked towards the classroom. Sabaki hmm? suddenly grabbed Mizuha's arm. Uh, this girl fucking rubs me the wrong way! Aww, maybe. Maybe I'm just the asshole here. Tsubaki grip loosened and Shiatori entered the classroom. Her eyes turned to me in search of help. To put it simply, Shiratori's father was given preferential treatment to a particular contractor during the bidding for the school's expansion project. Well, if that's what the papers say, then it must be true. Suvaki's face was enveloped by quiet darkness. Also, the Shiratori construction shares your family's Shares your family bought dropped. What shares your family bought dropped a lot in value. Huh. In other words, the shares the kidnapper took are worth practically nothing. I was trying to imply that this was really bad news for Sabaki's family. 
Even if they got the shares back, the 50 million yen would never return. Nevertheless, Tsubaki was only worrying about Shiratori. Mm. You're one to talk. As far as I can tell, you're in such you're in a worse you're in a much worse situation. This is this and that is that. Uh so good. I just don't understand how you find time to worry about others. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We entered the classroom. Lunch break rolled around. I went to the rooftop and called Miki-chan. What is it, Usami? I was stopped when I was just to go buy myself some bread. Hi, about Hiroki? Alright, what's up? You found something? Usami had stayed at Tsubaki's house after we parted ways. Shortly thereafter, Canon and Eiichi also arrived at the rooftop. I understand. How's the classroom? Eh! Eh! So did you find any clues? What did you find then? A photograph. A photo oh, yeah. The photo the kidnapper sent back. Alright, the one sent back with the hair. I had only paid attention to the hair at the time. Alright. What was it a picture of? Well, I guess it would be a picture of Hiroki. Usami nodded. Okay. You found hits in the photo? Usami shook her head after a slight hesitation. Give me the details. I haven't seen the picture. Yeah. What a, what was his facial expression? So he was lying on the floor or something? What time of day was it? So the place he's being kept is very dark. Then. Well, why do you think it is an abandoned house? Alright. A shelf? So, all in all, you classify it as dirty and untidy. Usami stopped for a moment. His face? I see. Oh, I see where you're going. It's winter now. The only possible explanation for this abnormal mosquito population is that he's being kept in a remote, abandoned area. Not bad. It's a step in the right direction, at least. Right. Everything could be easily seen by neighbors if the place was in a residential area. The kidnapper would try to avoid a situation where he'd, be, where he'd be spotted by local grandmas while dealing with the hostage. Uh, I know what you're trying I know what you want to say I sighed So what now? Are you inviting me on some Hardy Boys adventure To explore some runes with you? That face 
She appears to have found what I said to be quite lame. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Give me a break. Are you serious? Do you have any idea how many places fit that description in the city alone? Oh, this woman! Well, I don't know exactly, but there should be at least 50. This isn't something to all oh, over. <laughs> if we couldn't find him, even if we were allotted a month, then I couldn't continue. Don't just come out and say it so easily. Usami spoke softly. Come to think of it, is the reason you're so adamant in believing he won't return the hostage because he sent that photograph? Usami nodded. But if his only objective was to prove this, he could have just sent he could have just let Hiroki speak on the telephone. Hiroki is in a state where he can no longer even use a phone. Right. Where the photo was taken isn't necessarily where Hiroki is being kept. But... There are over 50 places in Tomenbetsu City alone. Yeah, that too! I frowned as Usami straightened up. Uh, what's with the sudden display of confidence? Likelihood. Setting mountains aside, aren't there pretty much all abandoned sites places with no people around? Yeah, I guess they're right. If I was a kidnapper, I would choose one of those places too. I'm not too familiar with the subject myself, but I hear it's pretty common for gangs to use those abandoned ruins as meeting spots, and the homeless to use them as homes. Hmm. This woman. I never knew that you were so optimistic. Very well. I just didn't feel like arguing anymore. Me? A list with information about nearby condemned sites? God. Oh, you're talking about that thing with H in me? <laughs> Information on condemned sites, huh? How well would I gather that? Some research on the internet and books would be the very best way to start off. I guess I could go ask the former gang members from the Azai Corporation's network. Anyways, I'm going home. No! Uh, Shibaki showed up just as I was revealing my disgust. What up, Tsubaki? Yeah, I was just having a little talk with Usami. Eh. Eh. Tsubaki took a glimpse at Usami, looking rather stiff. Damn, she just went straight towards it. Eh? No, wait, uh, I don't want to let any classmates into my room, let alone Usami. Prom promise? 
Ah, the promise to search for Hiraki. Ah, she's making it worse. Huh. You're really annoying, you know that? <laughs> I scratched my head. As I sat there vexed, someone called out from the hallway. Is Miwa here? Uh oh. It was Miss Noriko. She seems to be in a panic. Hi. Hi. Oh, shit. Subaki called back and headed toward the door. Miss Noriko's face was deathly white as she spoke to Subaki. Dude, I'm not liking where this is going. Subaki returned after a while. <laughs> Subaki had a frightened look about her. <laughs> what happened? Now that I think about it, she hasn't been well lately. She's been in bed ever since the kidnapping. Which which hospital? I tried to remain calm. <laughs> Judging by the name of the hospital, Subaki told me. It was a general hospital in the Eastern District. Alright, take a taxi there. It'll get you there in no time. <gasps> taxi? I'll call for one now. I'll lend you the money. It shouldn't be more than 5,000 yen. It's like 48, 48 bucks. Or like 45, something like that. I can't. Don't worry about it. It's an emergency, right? I took a 5,000 yen bill from my wallet and handed it to Sabaki. I picked up my cell, called to the cab company, too. The call was already over by the time Subaki had a chance to resist anyways. He said he'd be here in five minutes. Go in the front school. Go wait in front of the school. I already told him to this. The <gasps> Holy shit. He said he'd be here in five minutes. Go wait in front of the school. I've already told him the destination. Oh, she's so adorable. What's the matter? You look like you want to cry. <laughs> Oops. Sabaki held the 5,000 yen bill tightly in her hands and dashed out of the classroom. Watching her back turn the corner, Usami whispered, <sighs> It's because I'm rich. No, really, it's normal, isn't it? She, is she misunderstanding me? My business with Sanal Corporation is only possible because of Subaki. I have to, replay, I have to repay this favor. Of course, but can you come to my house tomorrow instead? I get the feeling I'm being led around by the nose here. Very well, you, but you have to leave as soon as you have what you want. I still have plans for the night. The bell signals to, to end the lunch break. Oh well, this could be a chance to investigate the connection between Usami and Mao. <laughs>